No fear. Then I shall teach you something. Lieutenant, the legend is true. This man is a god. He is nothing. Nothing but a monkey. Don't make any sudden moves, Sir Lieutenant. Back off. Slowly. Slowly.
What's the bet again? The ruby ring and 20 Deutsche Marks, please. And that's, uh, $50 American. 50 bucks. Sure you want to do this? Okay, but remember, this was your idea. Okay. We'll see you. And right. The glass eye. It's opal. With a sapphire center. Uh. Cost me a couple hundred bucks in 36 when Jack and I were flying gold out of Peru. Ah, oh, we were flushing in, weren't we, Jack? Huh? <laughs> it's worth. At least 1,200 Deutsche Mark on the Singapore market. Three beautiful ladies. What are you upsetting me for? I asked you if you wanted to bet your eye, didn't I? Jack! Jack, stay! Did you hear me? I asked you if you wanted to bet your eye, didn't I? <laughs> what do you mean, no? I showed you my hand. I said, what do you say? You said, bluff, right? <laughs> Jack, what, what are you trying to pull? Jack, stay. Yes is bluff. And no is bluff, bluff. Right? <laughs> right, so. Jack. What's no? <laughs> What do you mean, nose rough? Oh, I get it. You're trying to switch signals on me. You want everybody to think I lost your eye again. Well, it won't work. All the world knows rough is yes, and rough, rough is no. Jack? Jack, are you listening to me? Jack? Gosh darn it, Jan, it's too hot for this. Must be over a hundred. Never too hot. Sam, stop this. Oh, come on, Sarah. A little nice nice is not going to hurt. <laughs> Get out of here, mutt. Sam, don't hurt the dog, please. <coughs> Sam, hey, hey, I'll kiss you if that's what you want. Smell like it, girly. Ah! Jack, let go! <laughs> Sorry. I'm very sorry. Bad dog, Jack. Very sorry. But, uh, shouldn't have bit you. He just lost his eyes, and he's a little upset about it. <sighs> okay, we'll call it even. You all right, miss? Okay, we won't call it even. <laughs> I think it's silly, but ever since I can remember, I had this urge to be a... a knight. 
Well, not in armor or anything like that, just in spirit. You know, to help the helpless, to find the wrong and right it. Then somewhere around 13 or 14, it sort of all became an urge to save beautiful damsels in distress. I just wish somewhere in all those books I read about knights and dragons, they'd have warned me about damsels wearing little straw hats. I think that sounds sarcastic. Because that's the way I said it. Lady, didn't I just save you from a masher? That masher was my manager. I've handled his hot hands from Liverpool to Singapore to this two-bit island of Taga... 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 Taga Taya. Whatever. And I've done it without your help. Now he's taking the boat to Bora Bora to catch a clipper to Hawaii, and I'm stuck here with two suitcases, five pups, an empty stomach. And I want to know what you're going to do about it. It's Jake. It's not Jake. That's my name. Jake. Oh. And this pacifist here is Jack. Thanks for defending me, Jack. I'm the one who got beat up. I can't figure out how it happened. I had that guy on the ropes like Lewis had Schmelling, and then... Then I broke a bottle of champagne over your head. I didn't know it was French champagne. That was an attempt at humor. Humor? Really? Look, I didn't want to get stranded in the middle of the South Pacific. Sam may be all hands, but like I said, I can handle him. I'll bet you can. What's that supposed to mean? Take it any way it fits, lady. It's Sarah. Sarah Stickney White. Figures. Listen, Sarah, stick me white. The afternoon thunder bumpers up there are real killers. So the sooner I get the goose loaded and out of here, the better. I could use a little help. Really? Yes, really. You did sort of delay my departure a little bit by launching that bottle of champagne over my head. Good enough, I happen to be flying to Bora Bora. Yeah, I could have. 
thought I didn't. Your boat that brought me to them. He will never be late again. Imi sama, Doitsu no Yatsume ga tochaku shimashita. Yose. a test. Test? To become a Koji warrior, one must pass many tests. In this one, you must snatch the ribbon from the cobra's head. Some of my tests are not so difficult. Some are actually quite... pleasurable. Would you like some sake? You said you wanted to discuss a venture of mutual importance. Yeah, you've heard of the legend of the gold monkey. What? The... 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 You've heard of the legend of the gold monkey? <laughs> Don't tell me that little paper hanger in Berlin has fallen for that one. Princess Koji, I am a loyal German officer. While I don't indulge in politics, neither can I stand idly by while the leader of my country is insulted. <laughs> one must do what one must do. And I must protest. Mo most vigorously? Your protest is accepted. Good. Now you know of the legend. I know that somewhere in the Maravellas there is supposed to be a gold idol, as big as a house, guarded by giant monkeys. There is also supposed to be a Zulu tribe with the treasure of King Solomon's mines, and the lost Ark of the Covenant, and... German intelligence believes the legend of the gold monkey to be genuine. are decoded reports from two German officers who were here in the Maravelas. They were posing as Dutch artists seeking the idol. Those officers vanished while exploring an island which they thought might be inhabited by giant monkeys. Which island? I don't know that yet. Berlin is sending me that information by secret courier. Willie, despite your act, I know you're not stupid. Now, if this huge gold monkey exists and we find it, I shall keep it. Even if the Führer were to pay you five times what it is worth as gold? Why would Hitler do that? Because, according to legend, the gold idol survived the fire of a volcano. And you believe that? A thousand years ago, the Tzitzing monks who supposedly cast this idol knew the secret of blending gold with other metals to make it impregnable to heat. 
Germany needs such an alloy. For what? Rockets. Capable of hurtling bombs from one end of the Earth to the other. The only thing we're lacking at the moment is a metal capable of withstanding the tremendous heat generated by our fuels. Five times its gold value? Yeah. And what if this gold monkey doesn't exist? One million rice marks for your trouble? Willie? We have a deal. Bad. I would have enjoyed seeing how he fared in my next test. England and France, it was all downhill. <laughs> Sam booked me into half the gin mills from Marseille to New Delhi. Why'd you go? Wanted to see the world before it gets blown to hell. War is coming, everyone knows it. Even the isolationists, they just pretend they don't. What about you? Why are you out here? Uh, first thing to learn about the islands is not to ask a man his last name. The second is not to ask where he's from, and the third is... Why he's here, in the first place. You figured out how you're gonna get a ticket on the Clipper with only five bucks? Sam will be cooled off by the time that boat gets into Bora Gora. He and I may be quits, but he owes me at least a ticket home. He's not gonna make it. What? I mean, in time. He's got a two-day boat ride from Tagatai to Bora Gora, and the Clipper takes off at dawn tomorrow. But when's the next Clipper? A week, but she'll be flying west. The next eastbound clipper won't be along for two weeks. You mean I'm going to be stuck on Ball Gore with no dough for two weeks? Looks that way. Oh, boy. I don't know how well you can sing, but you're a redhead and you're American. Out here, that's worth something. I might be able to get you a job singing in the monkey bar. Monkey bar? Yeah, it's run by a friend of mine, Louie. No last name, right? Right. Most people just call him Bon Chance Louis. Lucky Louis? Yeah. He had a date with a guillotine once and lived to talk about it. You mean somebody tried to cut his head off? Yeah. French government. Only something went wrong with the guillotine and they had to let him go. It's some kind of unwritten French law. Would you fasten your seatbelt, please? Who? Are we there? Oh, no! Now, don't worry, it's gonna get a little bumpy for a minute, but that's all. Right, Jack? Despite her tough outer shell, or maybe because of it, I knew Sarah Stickney White was putting up a brave front. Under it all, she was just a frightened little girl. Then the port engine quit, and with her in the cockpit was a frightened little boy. I can't hold her in the air with all this weight. You're gonna have to go back and dump some cargo. Me? Unless you'd rather do the flying.
warned him, no fly the goose to Tagataya. Starboard carburetor won't take it. See, listen to Corky. No, I'm just his mechanic. Well, I'd serve him right if he's down in that sea with the sharks. to see you. Ah, oh, Jack, he lost your eye again. <laughs> He's lying. Jake? Jake? Jake, I told you that starboard carburetor wouldn't hold. Corky. I told you it needed rebuild and wouldn't hold the tire Corky. tie in back. Do you ever listen to Corky? No. And, and, and besides that, you lost Jack's eye again. Which eye? Sarah Stickney White. Which I? Uh, his left. His right. But I won't tell Jack he couldn't remember. I, I remembered. I was just testing you. Did I pass? Then we'll celebrate. I'll grab my stuff and buy you a beer. I like her, Jake. You like anyone who buys the beer. Oh, that reminds me that something I got to tell you. Uh, told you about the starboard carburetor. Corky. Yeah? Which engine am I working on? Port. Jake, the starboard carburetor held. That's right. Port engine quit. Hey! Someone give me a hand. You didn't dump that? You think I'm going to be stuck in the middle of the South Pacific with only the coast on my back, mister? You're crazy. The weight of that suitcase could have made the difference between us staying in the air or going in the drink. It could have. But it didn't. Mon ami, he lost it again, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, lost it again, lost it, it again. Well, uh, how is that, huh? huh? You are thirsty, huh? Louis, two beers. Ah, two beers. Two beers. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Oh, uh, sure. Sorry, uh, Louis, this is Sarah. Sh she's... Uh, uh... Just passing through. Enchanté. Hey, 
Hey, Jake Godman, you're too damn decent. Hey, little fella, come to Papa Louis, huh? Hey, come to Papa Louis. Hey, let's keep your faith. Be honest. See, one part means no, and two parts means Corky! Hey, Jake. Can I some of your beer? Oh, sure, Jake, sure. that ape tear me apart, and then you growl at the preacher. I see you have lost the poor animal's eye again. Uh, Sarah, this is Reverend Tenboom. He's saving the natives from original sin. Sarah flew in from Tagataya with me, Reverend. Then you came protected by God's word. I did. That reverence way of saying Bible. Tiki, why don't you prepare the church for evening vespers? I'd rather prepare for blessing. All in God's good time, my child. All in God's good time. Okay, I go prepare church first. That's so simple, so pure. Much like Adam and Eve must have been in the garden. It is our sacred duty to preserve such innocence. Then those are your Bibles we lost. Lost? Well, we had to dump them. You dumped my Bibles? Perplexed! Why would you do such a thing? I lost an engine, Louis. It's the only way I could stay in the air. J Jake's right. Uh, the goose will only lift 3,600 pounds on one engine, and, and she weighs nearly 3,100 dry. And, and then there's Jake's weight, and, and Jack's, and, and the fuel, and, and then Sarah's, and well, that, that comes to about, uh, uh, let's see, um, about, about 400 pounds. And then in Sarah's suitcase weighs about 50 pounds, and uh, you, you all barely made it. You save your suitcase, and you throw out my 1927 Pomperon? Oh! Well, it made sense at the time. 
It's not entirely hopeless. There's a chance we can recover some of it. You see, we dumped most of the cargo over an island. What island? Baku. Uh-oh, Baku! What's wrong with Baku? Uh, nothing, if you don't mind walking around on a live volcano. It blows every year about this time. Nobody goes near it. Including me. Insurance will replace your cargo, Louis, but it won't replace the goose or me. Sava. Thank you. Come on, Carkeep. We got work to do. What do you make of that? Uh, someone sugared the gas. Yeah, that's what I figured. Thank God it was only in the port tank. Jake, why? I don't know. Jake, mon vieux. You know, I've been thinking. Going to Baku would in a way be doing God's work. I mean, finding those Bibles. If that's true, Louis, then uh, I was doing God's work hauling them here, and I almost went in a drink. Besides, hunting for your goodies isn't exactly my idea. No, 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 no. But if we're looking for these very important Bibles, you found a little pate, perhaps a bottle or two of the Pompeyron. I do not think the Lord would mind. No. Bon. Ça va. Oui. <clears throat> Jake, I don't like to mention this, but um, you owe me three months back rent on the room. And the Corky's bar bill is longer than the Reverend's face. I'll even give you $200 in credit. Three fifty. Three fifty. Cash. American. Hey, that's what we need to get Jack's eye back, right? <laughs> and I want you to give Sarah a job singing in the bar. Mon Dieu, will it never end? Can she sing? Eh bien, she's a redhead and American, and it was a very special Pompeo. City. If you think I'm crazy to fly to Baku in the morning, you're probably right. But you don't have a dog like Jack. That little son of a gun can hold a grudge longer than any woman I've ever met. I don't know, Jack. Seems to me Jake's doing everything he can to get your eye back. It's not his fault he can't find it. <coughs> Come on, Jack, be fair. The Frenchman said he'd sold it to a bosun on the Hancock. Some old-timer with no nose bone? Thought his name was uh, Wilson or Winslow? No nose Winslow. He's our gunnery chief. Great. I got to talk to him. Remember that time in... Uh, 30... 34? When he, uh... When he lost right of that Chinese bandit and he flew all the way to Tibet in a snowstorm to get it back? Nope. Well, he'll get it back for you. You just gotta have faith, that's all. You just gotta have faith. You give blessing now? Yeah. That would be good. I give blessing now. Oh, God. What can I do for you, my son? Corky! A boat's mate on the Hancock has Jack's eye. 
They anchor here Friday, and he'll take 350 bucks for it. <laughs> what did I tell you, Jack? Eh, he'll believe it when he sees it. I'm going to check the charts. You need anything? A couple beers. Porky. I know, Jack. Oh. Oh, jeez. I almost forgot. Picked this up from an American sailor on Tagataya this morning. Chocolate. American chocolate. Jake, I haven't had American chocolate since, since, we, since we flew those nuns to the leper colony last, last, uh, last April. April. Mmm. Mmm. You coming, Jack? See you guys later. You know, Jack, sometimes you can be real unfair. This is insanity. You sabotage the plane bringing in my Bibles. Bibles which I need to help me find the island where the idol is. I didn't know your Bibles were on the plane. Believe me, if I did, my orders were to kill an American spy. You said you killed him on the dock. Yeah. But that was after the plane took off, and I realized it wasn't on it. You Gestapo, you don't think you merely act. I do not have to answer to you. We shall see about that. Some clever dog cop. And what in God's name are you doing in a German naval officer's uniform? They don't wear uniforms in the Gestapo. This is my cover. Fine God. Berlin settle who is in command here. Come on, Jack, give me a break. I really did think one buff meant yes. Honest, Jack. What are you doing here? I heard how you and Francis fought over me. His name is Francis? Uh -huh. Bobby. Mm -hmm. Bobby. You lied to me. You told me your husband was a runaway. It wasn't him, it was you. Well, so I got to who did what backwards. Oh, swell. <laughs> 
Yes, it's damn near took my head off this morning. Look at me. Come on, Jake. Let me kiss your boo boo. Oh, Jake, are you in there? Who's that? What's his name? Just a minute. Okay, you keep your mouth shut until I get rid of her. And you can spend the night. Deal? Maybe you didn't know. Oh, thanks. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on. I guess you're still a little upset about the eye. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, Louis offered me a job. Did he? Well, uh, that's, that's terrific. Yeah, well, it'll keep me honest till Sam gets here. Yeah. Or better yet, when, when Sam gets here. Mm. Yeah. You were right, you know, about the boat from, from Taga... Taga Taya. <laughs> it won't be in till tomorrow. Uh, I know. Um, look, Louie told me that you asked him to give me the job, and I oh, just came well, over look, here to thank yeah, you so you much for that. You would have done the same that. thing for me. Oh, sure. That's what you're a sucker for, huh? Innocent type. <sighs> Why does that kind always fool guys like you, hmm? Hey, 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 hey. You said I could spend the night. You can. I didn't say I was going to spend it with you. I'm done. That serves you right. Can I do a job? Not get involved with some hairy chested ape who can't even take care of a one eyed dog. I didn't know it at the time, but Sarah Stickney White, Vassar, class of 34, was an American spy. Not exactly a Matahari, but kind of cute in her own way. German radio traffic indicates Wehrmacht and Gestapo, both seeking gold monkey. Island of Baku involved. Received and understood. Can explore Baku. Will Sam join me? Sender. Sam killed Tagataya. Be careful.
are you doing up so early? I'm going with you. No, you're not. Well, Louis isn't going. He's scared to death of that volcano. And since I did throw the cargo out, I thought maybe I could help you find it. Besides, it might be fun. Hey. You look like you've been crying. Don't be. Please. I'm just allergic to something on the island. Or someone. Sarah? Hiya, Jake. Well, she's good as new. Almost. Poor I don't know how you do it. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, uh, Jake, uh, there's something I got it. You got to tell me. Yeah, uh, it has to do with the goose. Starboard carburetor? Uh, no, uh... Somebody here to see me. I hope you do not mind. I was amusing myself by imagining what it must be like to be a pilot. Oh. No, I don't mind. I do it all the time myself. What do you want? To help. I heard you wanted to see I back. Yeah, I do, but uh, what does that have to do with you? If I could get it for you, would that be worth, say, uh, a flight to my ship? Depends. Where's your ship? I could go to Takataya. I came over to pick up maps from my captain, which came on as a clipper. Your goose could save me a day getting back. Yeah? Where's the eye? I have it. The one from that frog sailor after he left the game in uh, my locker on board the ship. Fritz, you got a deal. Good. I've told you a thousand times, it's two. It's out here, somewhere, on one of these islands. It better be, Willie, because I don't like eliminating Jake Cutter. I've grown a little fond of him. Berlin was quite clear. The Gestapo agent is taking orders from me, and I commanded him to keep Jake Cutter and his plane away from here. Not to kill him. Like you, I rather enjoy having Jake around, even if I do suspect he is an American agent. It looks quiet enough. It's going to erupt. Well, maybe next year. Maybe today. <laughs> So, as they say in the travelogues, we flew to the beautiful island of Baku. What they didn't say is we flew with a German naval officer who was a liar, a pretty redhead who was after more than just a peek at the South Pacific, a dog who was obsessed with getting his eye back, and a mechanic who was, well, who was just badly in need of a drink. They were a little out of sync. Stayed in Boragora. And let you burn up my engines? No, sir, Bob. And besides, what, what are you going to do when that starboard carburetor quits, huh? She's running fine. Stow your toolkit in the aft locker and keep an eye on Fritz back there. Oh, 
Jake, I, I don't like being back there with Who's him. Who's captain here? I want your toolkit in the aft locker and your tail back there, now. Okay, Jake. All right. All right. You really are something. Hoagie is jumpy because he needs a drink. But all you know is he irritates you, so you climb all over the little guy. Listen, Sarah, stick me white. Corky and I have been together for a long time, ever since he pulled me out of a burning tri-motor in Guatemala in 33. You've known him one day. In that time, I've learned how to take care of him and how to keep his boozing to a minimum, and damn! What am I explaining all this to you for, anyway? I don't know. And why are you so mad at me? Last night, you were trying to get into my room. I was not! And even if I was, what would you have done with two of us in there? Don't answer that! Two of you? You saw Bobby leave my room. You're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> jealous? Jake Cutter, you are the most ego-centered man I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. I knew Jake wasn't really mad at me. Just because a girl tries to be friendly, you think she's making a pass at you. But where I come from, girls don't make passes. You got a mirror? They wait for the guy to... What? A small mirror, a makeup mirror. I need one. Do you really think I look like the type of woman who goes off to a volcanic island with a makeup mirror? Fritz back there thinks I'm flying him to Tagataya. Why would he think that? Because that's what I told him. See, he lied to me about having Jack's eye, so I lied to him. I think it all has something to do with you. Me? That engine we lost yesterday was sabotaged. There's only three reasons why somebody would do that. To kill me, Jack, or you. I think it was you. You know, you really ought to write for the movies. Your fantasies are incredible. Maybe. But any minute now, Fritz is going to realize I've been slowly changing our heading, flying away from Tagataya and toward Baku. And if I'm right about my fantasy, he's going to know I'm on to him. I don't fight well, Sarah, when I don't know what I'm fighting for or who. from the shipment. Agent. 
for, for Uncle Sam. Well, not for Uncle Adolf. And you really believe this, this legend about a gold monkey 100 feet high? It's not gold. It's an alloy. An incredibly heat-resistant alloy. And it doesn't really matter if I believe it or not. FDR does. And evidently, so do the Germans. <laughs> Hang on. Put your feet on those pedals. Hold the oak. What happened? The starboard engine quit? No. Jake. I just couldn't shoot him in the back. It's okay. At least he wasn't armed. Done. I gotta give him a chance to save his hide. I'm going with you. No, you're not. You're gonna stay here and guard Corky and the goose. So are you. <laughs> Jake, I've got this thing pretty well figured out. If you don't do as I tell you, I'm gonna take you over my knee and spank you. Women. Men. Children. They're all children.
You've unset monkey for company. You animal. If you kill Jack, I'll get you. I swear it. Why are you peaceful?
can't get out unless we let you. Jake? Drop the gun. You found the gold monkey. Yeah. change anything. You're still getting that spanking. Get out of here. Oh. One bark is yes. Jack. <laughs> Unless something's chasing him. And neither does he.
thought your Gestapo friend was going to divert Jay Cutter. One should never rely on the Gestapo. the preacher. I had heard that you had found something interesting on Baku. The gold idol. Ah, gold idol. Oh, boy. Gold. Yeah. Congratulations, Miss J. Sarah. Cookie. Louis, uh, what do you think it's worth? give you a couple of hundred francs for it. A couple of hundred francs for a gold idol? For a gold idol that is made of brass. <laughs> brass, monkey. Brass? Impossible. Why don't you rub it and see? I was just thinking of Sam. He died over a lousy piece of brass. Well, I get the feeling a lot of boys are going to be dying over things like that before too long. Not if I can help it. It is boss. If you will excuse me, young lady, I, I will take my leave now. It's been a, a rather tiring day. I, I think I will go home and, and bless Tiki now. Ah, time for blessing. He blessed Tiki earlier. Because he didn't have time to get around to it. <laughs> well, uh, how about another beer? Jack? He'll feel better when you get his eye back from that person on the Hancock tomorrow. The Hancock? Yeah, she's anchoring for weekend liberty. Not the Hancock. She's sailing for the Philippines on emergency orders. Uh oh! Jack! Jack, stay! Be fair. How could I have known? Look, I'll get your eye back. I promise, even if I have to fly all the way to the Philippines. <laughs> Trust me. But AC, that means no, Jake. One bark means no, and two barks means you. Corky! Hey, yeah, Jake. Can I some of your beer? Oh, sure, sure.
They have found it. Then all we have to do is take it from them. Don't bother. It's... It is made from brass. All that effort, just for a brass monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe we were all a little cuckoo to believe such a legend. <laughs>